Dr. Darrow. Yes, sir. Dr. Darrow. Nice number they're playing at the Trocadero. Five bucks did you get me there before it's finished? It's a deal. Here's your five bucks, thanks. Trocadero, where life is a song as we go along the merry throng, forget each other can. Never look up a clock. Good evening, Mr. Johnson. Good evening. Yeah. Wouldn't you prefer a closer table, Mr. Johnson? If I was any closer, I'd be in the show. Uh, the same? The same. To Gentlemen, I just want to say, that in case some of you folks don't know it, that you're still in the Trocadero, where you're going to have a good time if it cost us every cent you got. Ah, oh, a wonderful place, the Trocadero, if I say so myself. Oh, Eddie LeBaron. Ladies and gentlemen, our maestro, Eddie LeBaron. <laughs> Eddie deserves a lot of credit. He just signed a contract with MGM. Every morning, he gets up at 5 o'clock and takes the line out for a walk. You know what you need? You need some new material. I don't get when people come around here and sleep during your act. But last night I saw a man sitting in the ringside table with a nightgown on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ho, oh, Cliff, how are you? Ladies and gentlemen, you all know Cliff Nazaro. Cliff. Why don't you introduce the gentleman sitting with him? I was just coming to that. Well, go ahead. A world's famous cartoonist, Mr. Dave Fleischer. Why don't you tell the folks that Dave Fleischer drew Gulliver's Travels? I was going to, but... Say, you're Bob Chester. You mind? No, but I thought... Never mind what you thought. Everything happens to me. When a I famous don't... pen and ink artist comes into the place, be sure to show a little more respect. I... What? What's the matter with you? Something wrong with you? Oh, I'll be all right. I just feel a little Disney. Disney? <laughs> well, it's great to be here tonight. Trocadero say, you know, oh, you're the master of ceremonies. A fellow gets around, he can't roll some celery, man. Well, you don't know why you sell made the mice. Because if you follow the force to get you the orchestra and plays back and forth, you announce the acts, you tell them all about the cast, you're a man of famous. So why get yourself order and catering to my facility? Why don't you go over there and just kind of read the five percent and find out if there isn't a mess with it? Go ahead, ask Calcut if there's a cost. Call the son. I never saw anything. In a roundabout way. I try to tell you in a roundabout way how much I care I thought there was someone someone in your heart but I became the dumb one but actions play the part. How could we be happy? Romance didn't thrill you. You lied. You lied. You lied when we said we had a cast race on the little cameras of the Hubbins to kill a raven force to spend. It wasn't the way you carefree to your master. It was the way that you gave me that caster to be that I could go on with the little heptis hands and stop it. I was standing in the rain waiting for the bus from boss and you came along with the mess and I remember one night I walked up on your porch and I asked you if you ever cast for us with a metal mess and you did. I was satisfied to sit home and go to mice with the boys who spent. I remember one night you were standing there with your face hanging out telling me that I cast for with love and little kisses and hump and and horsemen. 
when you, you made me cast. It was all little lies and scuppers all through life that cast me split and hidden debates. When I held you in my arms, dear, and I heard you gently say, this is better than love in a round of hard way. So you're Dave Fleischer, huh? The great cartoonist. <laughs> well, I don't like them. And I'll tell you why I don't like your cartoons. You see, the trouble with your cartoons is this. When you start drawing a random phrase and you bring out the little cat phrase and you put a metal line through the cast, you can't just take something and draw a little cat phrase and show the screen where there's a maker force in the stubborn. Do you? No. I... You see, you can't break the seal mark. So I'd say I'd just go ahead and race. Cartoons are a matter of just going to race and put a little case when you have a base. And you draw that black and put the cast across a little face when they go through the base. And the guy goes over the passage and shows him running through the hip to make the seal of balking pattern in some house. So that's why your cartoons aren't even a cabaret. Oh, <laughs> well, I'll be a sap rat press and soft professor to pan and piss and snap. <laughs> CBG Studios have my contract now. They said that... I don't care what they said. The Trocadero has some rights in the matter. We're entitled to a week's notice and we're going to have it. Listen, honey, you might as well make up your mind to it. You're not going to become a picture star until Friday. Oh, all right. Cigars, cigarettes. Having trouble, Sam? Well, hello, Eskin. How are you? Sit down, Sam. Have a drink. No, thanks. It's too hard to get. <laughs> all kidding aside, Eskin. How do you like our liquor? Just right. If it was any better, I couldn't afford it. If it was any worse, I couldn't drink it. Once upon a time, there was a little frog Sitting at a dreaming on a gray Wonder if I'll have a chance to make a game. Bullfrog, feeling so lonely. Bullfrog, who's paging me? All by his only bullfrog, feeling unhappy. Oh, so unhappy, cause he's alone. Then came sweet little. Have you been running the truck? About 15 years, isn't it? A little over 10. Business good? Take a look for yourself. Pretty soft. What a soft spot you picked out for yourself. Once a newspaper man, always a slave. Working my fingers to the bone, trying to dig up a Sunday feature story. And here you sit, on top of the world, listening to the musical chimes of a cash register. Reservations, four weeks in advance. Yeah. Well, it wasn't always soft, Eskin. No? No, this place has had more ups and downs than a cocktail shaker. Do you remember Tony? Tony? Yeah, sure. Used to run a spaghetti joint. Always talking about his two kids. Yeah. 
Always talking about his two kids. They weren't Tony's kids, you know. He adopted them. If I had words, I could, I could write a book about how those kids loved Tony, and how he loved them. That's the tune that brought for feeling, remember? I'll never forget that night. Because that was the night of Tony. <laughs> Everybody was celebrating. A couple of boys in the business came in to see Tony. They thought a new era was being born. In closing time, I made a speech to him. I know we've all worked hard, done our best. But I guess prohibition just couldn't last forever. It's a big change, a sudden change. But if you ask me, it's a good change. It's an American gesture toward the thing we've all heard so much about. Liberty under the law. Tony here thinks it's okay. Come on, Tony. Say a few words to the boys. I, I'm no good to make it a speech. Oh, come on. I'm no speaker so good. What's in the heart? She don't come out. out. But I think you should know it's not so nice the way things she's been gone. And always when I think of this, I think of my Judy and Johnny. I'm a raise of these kids. First they like this. And they like this. A little while they like this. <laughs> now they like that. <laughs> I adopt these kids, but that's no make no difference. I'm a lover of these bambino. They love me. That's make a big difference. And Johnny, he used to get a big education so he can talk nice to the ladies and gentlemen. What's gonna come to this nice refined place I built for Judy and Johnny? Yeah, it's very good. So, my advice to you boys is, uh, you do the same thing. You get it a permit. You run your business straight from the shoulder. And when you do, believe me, you sleep a good when you go to bed. Gee, that was a swell speech, Tony. Come on, fellas, let's go out and take a look at the parade. I'll be back to help you close the joint, Tony. Yeah, we're close, Oh, that was a swell talk. He's right. You know, I always said that Tony Tony, Sam, pretty soon now, Judy and Johnny, they go east to this college. I, I'm got a lot of ideas. We're going to make this one big, beautiful place. Come on outside. I'm going to show you what I mean. Okay, Tony. Now, I'm going to work hard and make the money so I can have a nice, big place like uh, this. You see, Sam, this is science. It's no good. It's too cheap. We gotta have uh, what do you call uh, neon signs. Oh, neon sign. Huh? Neon. Yeah, yeah, sure. And 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 and, and this frog. Uh, uh, she's gotta be stream line. Of course, uh, I've not got the money to do that with right now. I just got enough to send you and Johnny to college. But in a four years, Sam, you and me, we build up of this place. Huh? Oh, so one of the kids gone away. In uh, four weeks. Uh, now they at the Pomona at the pep school. Prep school, Tony. But so whatever you call it. It's a place where they give them a just enough education. So they gotta have a some more to understand the what they just got. <laughs> Sam, I I I I'ma let you in on something. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna have a breakfast at the Pomona with the Judy and Johnny. Well, that's fine. Be sure and tell them I sent my love. <laughs> You're telling me yourself, you're going to drive on me then. Oh, well, that's more like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sam, this, uh, this entrance, we, we, we got to bring out here what you call a, uh, a, a marquis. Tony! Side of the plate do these things go on? They don't go on either side. They go on the plate, stupid. Oh, don't call me stupid. Uh. Oh, put them up. Come on. Come on. Oh. Get them up. What's on your hair? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Oh no! How could you do that? How could you do that? How could you do that to me? I hear you shouting. How could you? There's Pop. That's Pop. Hello, Sam. Hello, 
Judy. Hiya, Sam. Hello, Johnny. Where's Tom? Why, uh... Pop couldn't come with me, kids. What's the matter? Why, is he sick? An accident? Yeah. Yeah, an accident. A very bad accident. Paul, oh, well, come on, let's go. No, it won't do any good. The very last thing he talked about was you two kids and what he was going to do for you. And so, the only way we can repay Tony is by trying to make his dream place come true. Now, there's just one thing, kids. Johnny, I... I know how you like to play football, tennis. What a swell time you're having here. And as for you, Judy, those letters you wrote to Tony about how you loved it here, what a great opportunity you're going to have, studying music and things, and... Well, Tony wasn't a rich man. Only one of you can afford to stay here and finish the education. The other one has got to come and help me accomplish what Tony wanted. Ready for work. Well. Hello, Bullfrog. Hello, Judy. Judy, this is Mickey. Mickey Jones. How Hello. You? Mickey's a talent agent. And Maddie Melnick, our orchestra leader. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, it's all right. As a talent agent, the best talent I got's waiting. Does he say <laughs> comical things? Got a mind like that. Excuse me, folks. I'll be getting back to the band. See you later, Maddie. Okay. Judy, Mickey's got a few suggestions. Yeah. Well, I was just saying, Mr. Edwards. You see. I've got no axe to grind. I'm just trying to be helpful, but everything's changed since repeal came in. The first thing you've got to realize is that the name Tony Rockadero, that belongs to another era. Get what I mean? Slightly. And I hope it isn't what I think it is. Go ahead. In the first place, we've got to change the name of this place. Not a chance. As long as this place exists, it's going to bear Pop's name. Okay, but... I wish you'd believe what I'm saying has more significance than you seem to think, Miss Edwards. All the old restaurant owners, they've been changing the names of their places. Now, Tony Martinelli, he's put in pink cushions in his place. He calls it the Sunbeam Room. And Tim O'Malley, he sprayed the joint with Robin's Egg Blue. Yeah, and that Bally Hoinga, the surrounded boost for the light. Maybe Mickey's got something there, Judy. No, he hasn't. Not in a million years. I'm sorry, I... I know you're trying to help. We gotta give this place some class standing. We gotta keep up with the times. Ain't it the truth? Why, just today, I sold a, a class name, you know, nifty clothes and everything, four o'clock singing over at Nick's place, the Sleepy Lagoon. Maddie, do you know Louisiana Lulu? Sure. Let's try it. Okay, boys. Yet, everyone knows the toast of New Orleans. She 
dance at each cafe with southern rhythm. The men all lie today. She dances with them. They all call her a loo-loo. She leads the Mardi Gras queen. You Well, that was great, Judy. Well, I'm very proud of you, Judy. Thanks. We'll say, Bullfrog, where's that letter from Johnny? Johnny? Oh, I left the office. I'll, I'll go and get it. Oh. Why didn't you tell me? He's been up there six months now, ain't he? I bet he's got education up to his ears by now. <laughs> say, Judy, I know we're running a refined rendezvous. But would it be bad manners if I was to throw that guy at the corner table out on his ear? What's the matter? Well, he's getting nasty and he can't pay his bill. Tell him to pay it the next time he comes in. Goodwill, Bullfrog. Goodwill? But don't try paying off your waiters with goodwill. Well, Judy, how's he doing? Listen, Sam, this is wonderful. Next week I start taking up both French and Portuguese. What's he doing, running an elevator? No, silly languages. He's going to be a linguist. Gee, Sam, before we know it, he'll be graduated. With all that education and elegance. And then he'll be the front man for us, Sam. Can't you imagine him receiving all the Hollywood big shots? Ah, good evening, Miss Crawford. Lovely evening, isn't it? So salubrious and everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, say, Judy, I don't want to start a blues number or anything like that, but I got a little bad news. 102 bucks in the red this week. Do you think we're slipping? No, Judy. We slipped. As Mickey says, time marched on. And we had a tough time keeping step with it. We weren't marching, we were plotting. How we managed is a miracle I can't explain. But finally, we found ourselves struggling through 1935. Sam, is there some place where we can go and talk and uh, will you get hold of Judy for me? Don't tell me you have another idea. Oh, boy, I'm hotter than a two-dollar pistol. <laughs> when you sit down, Eddie, we'll see you in a little while. Tom, ask Miss Judy to come to the office, please. Okay, Mickey, what's all this two-dollar pistol business? Come on. Well, no beating around the bush, Sam. I want you to tell me the truth. How are you and Judy doing? All right, I'll tell you the truth. We're closing Saturday night. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll straighten you out for 10% of the gross. Why? Well, I, well, I think... Listen, Mickey. You like Judy, don't you? Well, naturally, I think Judy... Yeah, well, we'll take your dough. But I gotta be frank with you. Forget it, you haven't got a chance. No harm in trying, is there? No, no harm at all. Okay. Well, what do you want us to do? Hello, Mickey. What is it, Sam? Mickey wants to tell us something, Judy. Yeah. Now, look, Judy, let's make this quick. 
I know you're going to fold Saturday night, is that right? Yeah, I told them. Judy, things have changed, changes, changes all the time. I know, and you want us to keep up with the times. Yeah. But Tony Rocadero's name stays on. Okay. But Judy, you've got to realize there's been a big revolution in the nightclub field. Yeah, we've noticed that. Do you know why? No, you don't. But I'll tell you. Because the people are getting their kick out of music. Bands, bands, bands. Judy, I know what's coming. I've got my finger on the public pulse. So have I. That's why we're closing Saturday night. Now, wait a minute. I want you to clear a dance floor out there. I'll refinance you for 10% of the gross. Now, I'm not a rich guy, but I'll take a chance with you if you do what I tell you. I've got a little guy waiting out there by the name of Eddie LeBaron. He's an orchestra leader. He's got something on the ball, and he'll get in there and pitch for you. All right. Tell him we'll listen to his band tonight after the guest leave. That's what I like to hear. He's great, isn't he? Did you like it? Okay, boy, that it. did it. <laughs> Swell, Eddie. You're hired. I'm See you in the morning. I'll have a contract for you. Good. Be a pleasure to work here. Thank you. You won't be sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, Judy, you're off to a new start. Sam, who do you suppose they are? I'm looking for Miss Judy Edwards. Yeah? How much do we owe you? Nothing yet, but I'm going to give you a chance to owe me plenty. Come on, cut it down. What do you want? Do you need a band? We just hired one. How unfortunate for you. I bet you've got a great band. I've got the great band. Did you ever hear a swing? No. Well, you're going to hear about it in plenty. Well, I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. I know you don't. It's a new kind of dance music. Maybe you don't know it, but jazz is as dead as the 18th Amendment. Want me to tell you all about it? No. Okay. Now, it's ad living out of this world. I take a number, toss it to my cats, and from then on, it's every man for himself. Can you imagine? The guy's got an animal act. <laughs> Listen, sister, I can't explain this to you. Let's kick it around for you for a couple of minutes. I'm giving you an opportunity. What can we lose? Okay, go ahead. Go on, kick it around, whatever you got to kick. That's the spirit. You'll never forget this as long as you live. That's what we're afraid of. What's your name? Bullfrog. And don't crack about why I don't croak. <laughs> Great. Johnny! Well, what do you know? Johnny! Why didn't you tell us? 
Oh, I wanted to surprise you, that's all. Oh. Surprise me. <laughs> me. Me. Your husband? No, my brother. This is, uh, what's your name? Spike Nelson. Glad to know you. Oh, oh you I mean... sure play swell swing. Thanks. What do you know about swing? Well, I go to college, don't I? We find out all about that new stuff. Oh, right, you see? What'd I tell you? Now, do I get a contract or must I make somebody else happy? Uh-uh, bud. I just sold her a band. Well, I'll make it two bands. Make it a swing ship. Come here, I want to talk to you a minute. <laughs> oh, Johnny, come on. Come sit on. Down, Johnny. Johnny. Got an agent? Nope. I'm still single. Well, you got one now. Okay? It's a deal. I get 10% of the gross. Fine. Johnny, tell us about that game. You ran 90 yards for a touchdown. Oh, uh, we're first. taking this band on at $150 a week. Oh, boy. Oh, Mickey. You think we can afford to? You can't afford not to. Congratulations. Well, I think this calls for a drink, don't you? Oh, yeah. Good idea. Well, I think we'll do all right. Well, well, I do. Judy, this is a lucky break for the both of us. Both of us? Sure. I like you. Well, I don't know whether I like you. You will, sister. You will. I grow on people. <laughs> like a wart. <laughs> well, here's to Rocadero. Hey, say that again. Here's to Rocadero. That's it, sis. That's it. Mickey always said what this place needed was a new name, something with a swing to it. And you always said it had to be Pop's name. Well, so that. So this. He just said, to Rocadero. Get it? T. Rocadero. That's Pop's name. To Rocadero. To Rocadero. To Rocadero. Rocadero. I'm Miss Tardis. Johnny! I have been. Oh, boy, I'm glad to see you. Johnny, I'm so glad you got here on time. Oh, sis, I want you to meet Miss Carson, Mr. Carson. This How is my sister, do? Judy Edwards. Oh, Johnny, isn't it all too wonderful? I tell you, it's terrific. I... Excuse my enthusiasm, but none of us can hardly believe it. This all seems unreal. Yes, doesn't it? Miss Carson, Mr. Carson, this is Sam Wallace, the best manager, head waiter, bartender you ever known. <laughs> and the best friend in the world. <laughs> More than I expected. You show the Johnny becomes manager of this place. He does? Mm -hmm. You didn't tell me that. Well, I sort of planned to surprise you. You've succeeded. Johnny! <laughs> Hello, Nancy. You look swell. You get more attractive every year. He's selling me a bill of goods. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you carry me little cigarettes? No. Confidentially, they... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is strictly ad-lib. But there are a couple of clever people here tonight. And I'm going to see if I can get them to do a number for you. None other than our two bosses, the two people who made this wonderful night spot possible. Judy and Johnny Edwards. Oh, come on. Come on, I've got it out there. Johnny, you're the old routine, Johnny. Oh, and he's got it all in his shoe. 
go out there and kill them. Oh, they're marvelous. When you get alone, they'll kill them. They're out here anymore. mountain calling her son? No. How does the mountain call her son? Hey, Cliff! What do you want? <laughs> how could you do that to me? Oh, we played a game I thought I'd win. I never thought to you to take me in. You drew one card and shouted, Jim! Say, John, do you know why the Yankees can't play rummy? No, sis. Why can't the Yankees play rummy? Because the cards are in St. Louis. <laughs> How could you do that to me? Now everything was bright and gay. The world a paradise. I found out where your love lies. It lies and it lies and it lies. And the things you had told me you were untrue. I never tell those tales to you. But Johnny can do most anything, can he? Apparently. How did you do that to me? is iced water, what's cold ink? I stink. <laughs> You're telling us! Uh, how could you do that? How could you do that? How could you do that to me? Uh, how could you do that? How could you do that? How could you do that to me? <laughs> that is nice. Wasn't that disgraceful? It was really quite a surprise. <laughs> Johnny, it's full of surprises this evening, aren't you, John? Uh, yes. Oh, uh, you mean... You mean you didn't like it? Uh, what did the Master of Ceremonies say? It was terrific, colossal. It knocked them in the aisle. <laughs> and now, folks, how about a little dancing? While I go backstage and count up the applause. Who's going to play? Need you ask? Spike Nelson, of course. Of course you've heard Spike Nelson and his wonderful band. No, I don't believe I have. Oh, well, uh, suppose we dance. I, I think you'll like it. Must we? Excuse us. <laughs> sure. Bye. Right. Make a charming couple, don't they? <laughs> charming. Uh, excuse me. I must get back to my job. Oh, surely, surely. Quite all right. Isn't that smooth? Don't you like his music? Yes, naturally. Come on. Hi, Johnny. Hi, you Spike. I want you to meet Miss Carson. This is Spike Nelson. How do you do? Nice right, going, Johnny. Oh, uh, <clears throat> just keep that music running, boy. <laughs> is he a bit leader? Oh, no, no. He's part of the show. Are you always so chummy with the help? Well, you try to keep it like one big happy family. <laughs> I think the place of you. Why wait all those lonely hours? Why not take the cue that all those dreams that once were ours can't take the place of you? Judy, what's troubling you? Oh, nothing. Come on. Is it Johnny or his girlfriend? Well, she isn't one of us. I guess that. What's the matter? You afraid she'll induce him to move into her set permanently? I think she already has. What's so tragic about that? 
Let him go if that means his happiness. We're over the top. What else is there? To carry on. To make the Trocadero yes, the most... I know. And tie yourself to it for keeps. After all, don't you think that was selfish of Tony if that was his idea? What do you mean? Well, after all, there's you. It's time you quit devoting so much time to Johnny and an electric sign and let someone do a little devoting to you, a whole lot of devoting, for a lifetime. What do you think I've been sticking around here for? I could get five grand a week in a dozen spots. I haven't been hanging around just to build the place up or worry about Johnny or worry about his education. You know I've been sticking around here just because I'm crazy about you. Oh, Spike, let me go. Well? Well, we're over the top. Oh, you're wonderful, Mickey. Oh, it's not me. It's you, boss. Don't call me boss. I'm not. And Johnny's not boss. We're buddies, all of us. Just buddies. You, uh, wouldn't care to make the tie a little stronger, would you, Judy? Mickey. I think you're one of the finest, sweetest persons I've ever known, but... That's all I can offer you, Mickey. Sorry. Oh, it's all right. Just thought I'd ask. Guess I was overshooting a little. I'm satisfied with 10% of everybody else. I don't know why I should expect all of you. Forget it, bud. Double, Double bourbon. bourbon. Well, Nelson, great band you got, great band. How would you like to endorse my Milo cigarettes? I might endorse them, but I won't smoke them. <laughs> there you are. Everybody's crazy about them. <laughs> Why don't you let me handle the business? Don't you know they pay money for those endorsements? Besides, money I... Money again. All that you've ever loved. Yeah. Please take it, Julie. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Come in. Quite a formality. Must the future manager of the Trocadero knock to get into his own office? Won't you sit down? How do you like your new office, Johnny? Oh, it's a knockout, Sam. Look at these receipts, John. Uh, sis, I, I... I'm not going to take over. I'm not coming with the Trocadero. What? Johnny and I have talked the whole thing over. Well, we decided it would be foolish for Johnny to waste his college education on a garish nightclub. A garish nightclub. Garish? What does garish mean? Well, it means something the Trocadero isn't. Please, sis. It's all right, Johnny. I I think I understand. Yeah, but does Tony understand? Saving dough and depriving himself of things just for you to make this a, a high-class restaurant? That isn't the point. The point is, would this restaurant make a high-class man of Johnny? It's not good enough for you. Is that what you mean? Since you ask for it, yes. Johnny and I move in a different circle. Yeah? Well, then start moving in it right now. Sam, please. I'm not trying to be unfair. I'm merely asking you to be fair. Why, how would it sound to introduce Johnny to our friends at home as, well, a nightclub owner? Okay. I've had my say, now scram. Take him back to Tobacco Road. I'd rather be in this garish nightclub any time than be rolling around your old man's rotten cigars. Now, just a minute, Sam. No one's going to talk like that to Marge. Well, somebody did. And what I think of you is pure criminal libel. I'll wait outside. All right, honey. Yeah, so long, honey. Sam, shame on you. Marge may be right. After all, how could she introduce her fiancé to her friends as, as a nightclub owner? But just a minute, sis. Please don't get Marge wrong. She only meant that I'd have a greater future in her father's brokerage office. Look, you've done everything that Pop wanted, and you're the one that should get the credit. Go to your brokerage office, and I'll stay here. After all, Pop wanted us both to be happy. Oh, tell me you're leaving. What's the matter? Do we bore you? On the contrary, I enjoyed your office to Mr. Wilson. Nelson. Of the Kentucky Nelson. My father was in the tobacco business, too. He made the famous Nelson Plug Tobacco, the finest spit in the back in the world. So we're brother and sister under the skin. I see. We have lots of brothers and sisters out there. Everything from hog fat to razor blades. A lot of them don't like to admit it, 
Others are still hard calling. Me, I'm a sow's ear. Not everyone has the mentality to rise above their station. Some haven't even the mentality to become gentlemen. Oh, you're a silk purse, huh? I didn't keep you long, did I, honey? Well, good night, Spike. Good night, Johnny. There you are, my dear. Well, unless I miss my guest, Johnny will be all right. He'll get over this. I'm sticking with you, honey. You got a brand new place, Spike Nelson, a good show. Come in. There's not an empty table in the place. Now that my job here is over, I'd like a release. Release? Release from what? From my contract. I can get more dough someplace else. Do you mind? I see. You too. What do we do now? Offer you a partnership? I suppose you think you put us over. Not Judy, not Mickey, just you. Something like that. Why, well, you ungrateful... Sam. Let him go. We can get any band in the country we want. I got two telegrams in my pocket now from bands that want to crack at Hollywood. Sure, there are a dime a dozen. Then I can be on my way? The sooner the better. I'll get your check. You can mail it to me at the Palladium. Thanks for everything, Judy. What's wrong with him? Couldn't be you, could it? Average of 40 points finished at 95.87, up 28. While the commodity index number was up 15. But then on the other I, Oh, hello, Johnny. What do we have? Nothing, thanks. Well, let me get you a soft drink. Uh, Reynolds, mix up a limeade, will you please? Uh, no, thanks, Mr. Carson. Suit yourself. And never mind, Reynolds. Yes, sir. I'll get there. I told you. I saw that the reorganization railed interests were up very active today. The uh, rising to a fraction of two points. The other commodities were very irregular. I do so enjoy Tchaikovsky, even when interpreted by a novice. I still thought ever that Mademoiselle Minsky rendered the skin with a dauntless courage and force. But her arpeggios were insecure, lacking that dauntless courage which Freud so ably analyzes in his papers on the known and the unknown. I simply adore Isadora Tomlin's exhibits. Her wonderful mastery of color is far and away the best in the modern school of painting. Those great splashes in her dawns and sunsets. So exquisite. If you stand far enough away from them. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Edwards. Uh, pardon me. You're the groom to be, aren't you? Uh, yes, ma'am. We've never met. I'm Mrs. Comstock. Oh, it's a pleasure, Mrs. Comstock. I'm an old friend of the family. I'm so happy to know that Marge is marrying an Edwards. Oh, yes. The Archer of Roanoke Edwards? Uh, no, madam. I was born in Brooklyn. Good gracious. What gives? Oh, it's our house intercommunication system, sir. Oh, eavesdropping. Naughty, naughty. No, I only listen, sir, to anticipate any requirements of the family. Oh, well, let me anticipate a minute. Hey, Edwards, some sort of theatrical or circus family, I told. I forget which. How in the name of heaven did a Carson get mixed up in a thing of that kind? I understand his parents or somebody in his family runs a cabaret in Hollywood. A cabaret? And in Hollywood? It's worse than I thought. Yes, they say. My husband says. Some sort of entertainer. A hoofer, I think he said. Uh, how do you keep your ears so clean? You're lovely. You're rather handsome yourself, Mr. Edwards. Just an overhaul. Same old second-hand job with a new repaint. Look, honey, it's no dice. What do you mean? I don't know Tchaikovsky or Freud, or the difference between a cocktail here or down at my place. And even if I did, I still would be chummy with the help. So, I'll be seen. Johnny, don't you dare leave me like this. You mean in front of the elite? 
Oh, don't worry, honey. Just tell them I was a, a fortune hunter and you gave me the air. Or maybe I can get thrown out. Did I hear something about a hoofer? Don't tell me I have an affinity amongst us. An ex corine perhaps? Or, or a burlesque queen? Oh, come now, Mrs. Comstock. Don't, don't, don't tell me you've forgotten those old steps. You know the one where you did uh, one, two, three, kick? One, two, three, kick? Oh, I haven't shocked you now, have I? Uh, just a minute. All I need is just a little room here to show you. You remember the one we used to stop the show with that went like this? Oh, swell. me at the Trocadero. I own it, but I'm also one of the help. Tough, ain't it, Toots? <laughs> oh, Dad, it was awful. I'm so ashamed. The disgraceful publicity. It's good for me, low cigarettes. But he can't do that to me. What? No dice me. Uh, no dice. You, uh, you didn't want him, did you? Want him? I should say not. I hate him. The upstart. <laughs> oh. Careful, careful. Oh, oh, now oh. you're all. I don't see what I saw in him in the first place. After all, you can't make a sow's ear out of a silk purse. Dope. Dad. Hmm? Are we really snobs? A slight tinge. Trocadero? Yes, yeah, sir. Who's this speaking? But this is the maid. Miss Judy Edwards, please. What? Well, sir, you see, I hangs out in the ladies' room. Yeah, sir. She's not in or not in the Spike Nelson? Well, the last time I heard her express herself, she said you could pick up your trombone and slide. Right, Judy? Sam, we do need him, don't we? What for? We got a big vaudeville show coming on. We can get any band we want in the country. Why, we can... You mean you need him, Judy? Is that it? Sam, I think I'll go rehearse. Number? Sure, Judy. Come on, boys. Trying to forget happiness that we knew. Trying to forget moments I shared with you. in harmony, trying to forget. 
it is hopeless and it seems. Now tell me why did my sky turn to gray when it once was such a pretty shade of blue? Me on the society column? Well, I'm in at all, I'll be on the scandal page. The what young man and his society fiance and what have you column. What's wrong, Johnny? What's right, you mean? Sam, will you have my suit pressed up for me? I'll be on the door tonight. You know, this way, please, and all that head waiter stuff. That's for me. Okay. Thanks, Sam. Johnny. Is everything all right? Oh, it will be, sis. She's sweet, but too much class. I can't see class in what you wear or what you have, only in what you are. Isn't that what Tony taught us? Of course, Tony. Well, that brings us up to date. You call that a success story? What's wrong with it? The kids came through for Tony? What do their little heartaches matter? They'll forget them. The big thing has been accomplished. They put Tony's name up in lights forever. Well, Sam, I still have to get a Sunday story. Oh, come on. Sit down and see the rest of the show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to give you my impression of radio's outstanding program, mystery show, The Whistler. I am The Whistler. Ladies and gentlemen, Ida James will offer Shoe Shoe Baby. Thank you. Be well. Table seven, if you please. Oh, Pierre, I'll uh, take this one. Yes, Mr. Edwards. This way, please. Treating them rough 
Introducing a grand gentleman, the Yankee Doodle Boy, Jimmy Cagney. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, friends. It's a great pleasure for me to be here this evening and to bring to you now a grand guy. You all love him, Jimmy Stewart. In a scene from that outstanding motion picture, Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Stewart as Mr. Smith. Jimmy. Mr. President, fellow congressmen, my name is Jefferson Smith. And when I first came to Washington, I could find an apartment. Anybody could find an apartment then. Well, it was Thomas Jefferson's belief embodied in detail in the Bill of Rights that all men are created equal in the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mr. President, fellow congressmen, there's one thing I'm going to say and say quickly. I'm going to stand on this floor if it takes the rest of my life to convince you guys to get me a room. Thank you. Thank you. We certainly have a big crowd here tonight, don't we? Judy, got a little surprise for you. Mickey, she's here. I've got to see Johnny. Oh, Johnny's going to be all right now. I don't want you to miss this surprise. You're going to like this. Ladies and gentlemen, from Monday on, our programs will be broadcast over the entire MNS network, sponsored by the Carson Tobacco Company, makers of Milo cigarettes. Milo cigarettes? Gentlemen, may I bring to you that well-known orchestra leader. But why mention his name? For here he is. to listen to that broken down Milo cigarette program. Well, beginning Monday, I'll be head waiter at the Joe's Beanery. Drop in sometime. Now, I'll bean you. Well, that was ladylike. Well, please. Oh, pardon me, miss. I'm... when you said I can't erase with the resignities and the softness for the man it is. Go ahead, baby, you're wasting time.